Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eon's Battle. So a Zenith All highlight is a scam, right? It's a fancy looking thing that so-called pro painters use to show off. Well, that's sometimes true. I've seen many, many paint jobs where the Zenith All is basically all covered up by the end of the process. I think there is definitely still some value in seeing a mini like this so that you can work out where the highlights and shadows should go, but it's often not necessary because paint is opaque and it'll cover it up. But what if you really want to get the most out of a Zenithal? Well, then you need to take advantage of transparent paints. And I'll be demonstrating this with these minis. Wow, Jay, those miniatures look incredible. What are they? Where can I get them? Well, let me tell you. We are producing original miniatures monthly, available as STLs and physical 3D prints. This is our June release, The Vine Knights, sculpted by Licorice, the same artist who did our animated intro. It's our second mini for the Miniatures of the Month Club. If you have any ideas for miniatures you'd like to see us produce, please leave your ideas in the comments below. But now I'm gonna paint up these Vine Knights. I took my minis and got them ready for painting. I glued them down to some bases I made by gluing down decorative rocks. These are relatively smooth while having some nice cracks and crevices. Then I primed the models black in preparation for the Zenithal, but instead of spraying from above in a classic Zenithal pattern, I sprayed from the top left to create a light source. One half of the mini is white and the other half is black. I always try to get my minis about 50-50 black and white with a Zenithal because it gives me a lot of value. I see a lot of people overdoing the white because it's scary when some areas feel too dark, but pro tip, let them be too dark. Now to successfully take advantage of a Zenithal, it's all about paint choice, but not color, opacity. If I use standard mini acrylic paints, I will lose a lot of what I have just created with my Zenithal. Even if I thin the colors, they'll still create an opaque layer hiding what's underneath. So what I want to do is use transparent colors like contrast and speed paints, washes like Agrex Earthshade and Army Paint or Strong Tone, or inks, which are the most color saturated of the bunch. I started out with a coat of Army Paint or Runic Gray on the armor. It gives a subtle blue to make it look clean and shiny. Paints like this are transparent to change the appearance of what is underneath without hiding or covering. After that, I put a green wash over the base and while that was wet, I dripped some speed paint camo cloak into the wash to create some variety and color saturation. The speed paint is thicker with more pigment, so it'll allow less light to be reflected off the white and give the base a more mottled appearance. Then on the vines, I painted them with speed paint, and this paint has a longer drying time than standard acrylics, so once I had it all painted up, I went in with a damp brush and wiped away the paint from the raised areas to create some highlights. I do this before the paint is set up and so it all blends out evenly. I put a null oil wash over the rocks to bring out all of those natural nooks and crannies. And I put a purple wash over the cloth, and while that was wet, I painted on just a little speed paint Hive Dweller purple to make a gradient within the cloth. Some areas would be lighter than others, and so to replicate that, mixing these two products creates areas that cover more and less within the white Zenithal. When my rocks were dry, I painted Army Painter Speed Paint white over top, which will turn the white peeking through into gray. That way, the true white peeking through on the armor will look more striking than the gray white on the rocks on the base and I layered more blue on the armor to create spots of shadow, on joints and creases within the armor, and putting a little watery green contrast on the rocks to make it look like moss is growing on them. And as you can see, I'm taking full advantage of that Zenithal. I have not highlighted anything anywhere, only using transparent paint to cover and tint spots. Finally though, I did put some opaque paints onto my palette, black and white. I used the white to do some edge highlighting and the black to paint the edge of the base black. These processes are basically impossible or just inappropriate to do with transparent paints. But as I looked at the finished mini, I thought of one more trick, inks. I used a magenta ink to boost the color saturation on the cloth parts. This transparent ink goes right on top and will still show everything underneath. It does not have that pool and darken in the recesses power that the contrast and washes do. It tints, not covers. And I used indigo ink on all the black areas to make them a little more blue. And then the models are done. I am very happy with these minis. They are quick to produce and have some really nice things going on. It would have been quite a process if I had primed them black and then painted them up to where they are now with regular opaque paints. But starting with a model nicely highlighted and strategically covering the mini with tints, washes, and shades makes for a really interesting paint job very quickly. It's something I forget about all the time, but it's really important. Opaque versus transparent paint. It makes a big difference. They are designed to do different things. If you use them the wrong way, it can lead to a lot of frustration. And if you use them the right way, you can get some amazing results really quickly. The transparent paint lets you see what's underneath, so my airbrush Zenithal makes the minis look smooth. But sponging could create a rough, interesting texture, dry brushing could make for some harsh highlights, and stippling could add highlights right where you want them, as opposed to letting the airbrush make the decisions for you. There's a lot of tricks with transparent paint. These minis painted up fast, and I could have taken them even further, perhaps some free handing, decals, or dry brushing. Having gotten to this stage so fast, all I want to do is keep painting. Transparent paint for the win. 
And what an excellent model. Last month, I painted up the Squid Mage and Jim O'Connor took up the challenge, painting up his copy in stunning fashion, replicating the concept art from Licorice Perfectly and even sneaking a portrait of Danny DeVito's face into the tentacles. Great job, and I hope to see many Vine Nights next month. If you want the STL version of the Vine Night, you can find that on our Patreon, and after the month of June, they'll be available to purchase. And if you want to buy a physical copy, there are two links in the description below, one for the US and one for the rest of the world. Thanks for watching.